Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts back again with a word from the Lord dealing with darkness. Mm, okay, we're going to read a little verse, a little verse in scripture, a few of them, and we're going to get to Pat's two cents, which is the message. Here we go. Starting in St. John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. If you say that in today's terms, darkness doesn't get the light. Here we go. <laughs> now, the thing I want to share about that is they are so diametrically opposed. It's funny. But when you deal with people who want to live a Christian life, a saved life, a clean life, a righteous, holy life, people who don't are annoyed by the people who do. Do you notice that? That is so funny. And what, what really cracks me up is when you see people who don't want to live according to God's rules, but they'll say in a New York minute, oh, I believe in God. I believe uh, in, in, uh, in, in Jesus. I, uh, I'm, I'm a Christian. I'm a good person. There's nothing wrong with me. <coughs> oh, yeah. There's nothing right with any of us unless God fills us with his Holy Spirit, and we happen to have a few good good areas in our character because of him, not because of ourselves. Anyway, so don't get to boasting, y'all, because if you're living in darkness, this is what the Word says in, what is it, John chapter, 1 John, 1 John. It says really close to Revelations here in the Bible. So go to 1 John, okay, chapter 1, 1 John chapter 1, and I think it's only going to be one or two verses in that, but I want you to hear what that one says. That's interesting. <laughs> Starting at verse 5, this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Check this out. Verse 6. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie. Hey, I didn't say it. The word said it. Don't look at me. And do not the truth. Mm. Verse 7, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Now, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. Hey, I didn't say it, the word said it. And the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, though, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we have no excuse. But see, this is the problem. Many of us want to believe. We want to go into denial about our flaws, our sinful nature. And we want to say things like, well, I never killed anybody. I never, I never stole. I never did this. I never did that. But guess what? Everything in us is bent towards sin. We were born that way. You either are greedy or self-righteous. That too is a sin. 
or you look down on other people and look up at others because you have partiality or maybe you're prejudiced or maybe you have a bad temper and you have a way of putting down your kids and 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 uh and and tongue lashing your wife or or what's the word castrating your husband with your mouth so those of us who want to believe that we our stuff doesn't stink Guess what? I'm going to say it in street term. Don't think your stuff don't stink, baby, because it does. And it stinks to high heaven because God is the one that's saying, that is a stench in my nostrils. He said it in Isaiah chapter 1, if you want to read it. So I'm saying that to say, you guys, God is light. And we cannot fool ourselves. If we're out there doing what we're big and bad enough to do, sleeping with Tom, Dick, Harry, or Susie, Sally, and Jane, or sleeping with them both, separately or at the same time, whatever, sitting up there, getting high, getting loaded, getting drunk, uh, hooked, selling our bodies to satisfy our, our, our needs, our habits, Listen, you guys, if you're at a job in corporate America, <laughs> the businessman with the $100 tie and the $1,500 suit or $2,000 suit or $6,000 tailored suit, whatever you want to call it, your stuff sticks just as bad as the crack addict down on the street living on the street. It's all the same to God because a raunchy heart is just as bad as a sinful life. A greedy mindset. I'm telling you, when you think that you're a child of the light and you're not walking with God and you're not obeying him and you're not living according to the ways of God, you're fooling yourself. You're lying to yourself. Because God will say one day, when he cuts that sky in half, he'll look at you and say, depart from me. I never knew you. You that work iniquity. You're going to just about sell your mama down the river in order to make an extra buck on your business. You're going to lie. I mean, lie. Business deals, all kind of corruption. Treachery, you slum lords that are ma making bank, baby, and you won't even go into a rat infested apartment that belongs to you because the neighborhood is not worthy of your presence. So you're not going to waste a dollar. And those people, if they stupid enough to live in your building, fork up the money, and that's all you want to hear is cha ching. Oh, you just as raunchy, baby, as the pimp on the street, beating up his prostitutes and making them go out with whoever they choose, even though the prostitute may not want to. I'm telling you, all of you guys think that your stuff doesn't stink. Hey, it's a lie. My stuff stinks too. All of us stink in the nostrils of God. But those of us who are at least trying to live for him all the ones he recognizes because we know we're a mess we recognize we have problems we're willing to acknowledge i'm telling you if you can't acknowledge where you fall short baby you can't get help there is no help for you god won't waste his time on you Oh my goodness, you guys. You gotta be careful about how you how you jump to conclusions and how you think that uh so highly of yourself. Cause that is a stench in God's nostrils. I, I love God's patience with us though. He'll even see us through those those ugly periods of our lives where we think that uh 
<laughs> where we think that uh, that nothing's wrong with us and we're okay, you're okay, everything's okay, and that's okay. And God's saying, no, it is not okay. Listen to this. This is James, okay? <laughs> this is James chapter 5. Now, this is what he says. This is why we need to be honest about where we are. Because even if we, if we think our stuff don't stink, yeah, it stinks. But this is the remedy to it. Okay. James chapter 5, verse 16. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. You know, when we are willing to accept the fact that we are not all that and a bag of chips like we'd like the world to believe, we can get a whole lot of help from God. If you have issues with forgiveness, if you have issues with greed or prejudice, or you have money issues where you would do anything, sell your baby up the river to get another dollar, and you know that you have turned the dollar bill into idol worship, and you see it for what it is, you take that to God and watch how quickly you get delivered when you honestly and humbly come to God. Because his word says, humble yourself. In the sight of the Lord. And he will lift you up. But the proud and prideful. And the haughty and the stiff neck. Oh boy. You got a hard road to hold with God. Because he doesn't like that. He'd rather you come. All messed up and funky. And really. Honestly confessing to God. Lord. You know, I hate so-and-so, and I know you don't like us to feel that way. Or I wish so-and-so were dead. And I wish I could I could do the deed. But I don't want to go to prison. But God knows that murder's in your heart. He already knew it before you recognized it. But when you come to him with that kind of honesty, that's where you can get help. You can't get help if you know it all and you've been there, done that, and can't nobody tell you how to catch a cat and, you know, just don't get in your business, just let you be. No, you've got to be willing to do whatever it takes. Let me tell you what my father told me years ago when he was totally unsaved. He said the biggest thing that ever stuck in his mind as far as a real Christian is concerned. Years ago, he knew a man who he used to hang out at the bar with and, you know, they worked together at different jobs at times. As he was a moving man. He even had his own line, his own fleet for a while. But let me tell you this. My father said this man, who, who he knew, had given his heart to the Lord. And the thing that shocked my father the most was he humbled himself so far down that he walked up the steps to a man's house, knocked on his door, rang his doorbell until he got there. And when the man opened the door, he stood there knowing anything could have happened to him at that moment, took a watch that was in his hand and said, brother, please forgive me. I stole this watch from you years ago, and I came to give it back. That's when a person is doing whatever it takes to get right with God once you've given your heart to the Lord. That's a person that's serious. That stuck in my father's mind. And thank God, before he died, I was able to lead him to the Lord because he saw the change in me as well. And all the selfishness he knew was in me was gone when I took care of him until he died. He knew there was a God. He knew this thing was not just lip service. So I tell you, if you really want to be a child of the light, First of all, you have to confess that you need help. You have to confess that you've been wrong a time or two. Confess it to God and confess it to one another.
Be real. Come to him with a humble heart, you guys. That's where the help is. Get up off your high horse and stoop low and be willing to bow. You hear me? God bless you. Your help is in your humility. Your help is in your honesty. Get real with God, okay? And God bless you as you do. Because God will come to your rescue. And you will find your life totally being turned around if you're willing to humble yourself and come out of the dark and come into his marvelous light and live as a child of light.